All right, y'all, welcome back. It's Albert LaBelle, and we got something pretty cool uh, to check out. Um, now, this is the Bully Rotisera. All right, if you're not familiar with the Bully Lock Company, I highly recommend you check out their website. Now, uh, Lock Noob, um, he did a wonderful video where he, uh, you know, uh, took it apart and really showed how the uh, mechanics of the lock work and all that. And uh, I will also leave a link for that video down in the uh, description section of this video. So I highly recommend you check out both of those. The Bully website because they've got some great photos of how this lock works and a video of, you know, a, a 3D and an animation of it that's just beautiful. I'll put a couple pictures up from their website too at the end of this video so you can check those out. But check out both of those links I leave down there. I highly recommend them. So we are going to tear into it a little bit too, because I got to explain, um, you know, I kind of pride myself on disc detainer locks because I've gotten pretty good at picking them, but this here is on a whole nother playing field. Um, and I'll explain why in a, in a, in a minute here. So, uh, first of all, uh, the Bowley lock company it was started in what 2015 by two brothers uh where did i write their names down uh ryan and tyler bully they started it so uh right now i can tell you hats off to you guys and your company what you did here is phenomenal uh they are a canadian company now they do say right on their website that it's not a 100 percent canadian made product uh, because they do have to source some parts from other places but they're working on uh, eventually doing them all in house. So, you know, they're, they're working on it. Now this is a prototype. Okay. Uh, that, uh, Ryan sent me to check out. And, uh, so they're going to, they're going to get better from here. Just little tweaks. So this detainer locks, how I'm able to pick them. Let me actually, let's, let's back it up a little bit. Here are the keys for this odd lock. All right. By the way, these keys are made out of, uh, he said, 303 stainless steel. You can see they're kind of thick, too, and they need to be strong. Because if you can see, the way these are cut, they're cut. The depths on these are actually that way. So you see some of these are a little bit longer than others. You see this one down here. It's just kind of a little bit left over. That's the depths going that way. Okay, so when you rotate this key, that's what's allowing each disc to rotate as much as, you know, that particular coded disc needs to rotate for all the gates to line up and for the lock, for the sidebar to fall in and the lock to open. So, this one does work a little different. If you're not familiar with this type of lock, you're going to have to get used to it, okay? Because it's not like the traditional keyed lock. For these, you put the key in the keyhole. Then there's a spring, well, it should spring back. Yeah, you see that spring right there. Okay, you're gonna depress that spring. You're gonna rotate the key 180 degrees. Then you're gonna push in again, just a little bit. Boom, now you just unlock the lock. Now it'll rotate any which way you want because it's now disengaged and unlocked. To bring the key back out, there's the name Bowley. On the top there, I'll show you in a second. You need to bring that back up, okay? Pop it back out. Pop it back out like so. It's going to pop. Then you rotate it back that 180, and then the key will come out. Now, you see that bully right up there? You want to bring that back up, okay? So let's do that again. You put the key in, depress the spring, 180, push in that little bit again, boom, locks unlocked. Once you do that a few times, you're going to get used to it. I did real quick, but it is different. So you will have to get used to it. Now I'm going to have to take this out because I need to show you why I can't pick this dang lock. So let me grab a hex wrench here. Let's just pop it out. Now they made this nice too, where you can bottom it out and it's not going to bind. So that's nice too. I've had some of these uh, puck locks where if you tighten this too much, the uh, carriage doesn't slide. All right, so let's pop that out. Let's unlock it. Boom, and we can bring this out. Now we can bring that adapter off. And we'll just lock this back up. Boom, boom. So I found with this uh, 
it's a Schlage style uh, tailpiece here. It's kind of hard to get to the little uh, pin in there, which is right over, where is it? It's right here. So I found, just using a shim, a lock shim, slide it down the side of this uh, tailpiece here, depress the pin, then I can unscrew this cap. Depress the spring. Come on, baby. Ah. Depress the spring and unscrew the cap. All right, now we can just take all this tail stuff out, the little pin, the little spring, set that stuff aside. Now, there are three ball bearings that are spring-loaded pressing up against the sidebar. I'm going to go ahead and disassemble this and let those all pop out because it's real easy to reassemble it, so I'm not worried. It's not like a pin tumbler lock where it's going to explode and you're going to have a problem putting it back together. It's not a big deal. I'll show you. Just going to slide this out. Boom, boom, boom. There's the three springs, three ball bearings. Again, there's a nice picture of how exactly how that works on their website. I'll put it on the end of this video to show you. But yeah, all three of those are pressing down evenly on this sidebar right here. Now, that doesn't mean this sidebar is pressing against the disc. It's not pressing against the disc until that second step. Remember I said you put the key in, rotate it 180, then you do that second click. That's when it allows that sidebar to fall in. Let me see if I can show you that. See, right now, that sidebar, it's it doesn't stick up much, but it does stick up, okay? So once I put the key in, rotate the disc. Now they're all going to rotate to where the all the gates are lined up right there, but it still doesn't fall in until you push it forward. You see that? God, I hope it's picking that up. So not until then is that sidebar falling against the disc. Now, the way I pick, I'll speak for myself, the way I pick disc detainer locks is usually I'm looking for a zero cut disc that I'm going to use to tension the lock. I will put tension on that disc, forcing the sidebar up against all the discs. Then, as I rotate them, I can feel the sidebar rubbing against the side of them, and then I'm feeling for the, the true gate. The false gates are a little tighter, and I'm feeling for the true gate where it just kind of clunks in. That's how I can pick disc detainer locks. I'm talking about like the Kryptonites, the Abus, the Abus Plus, uh, the uh, Abloy Classic. Uh, different profile, but same idea. You need the sidebar to rub on the disc, in order to find the gates. They've eliminated that here. They've taken that out because again, that sidebar is not rubbing on the disc ever <laughs> until you put it in, rotate it around and you push it in again because there's a right in the center. Let me pop this back out. Now we can pop this sidebar out and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Come on, baby. Set that down. So you see that little pin on the bottom there? That little, that little teat, if you will? Okay, that's riding on a disc, or at least another uh, mechanical piece inside here, right in the center. And that doesn't slide forward until right there. I don't know if the camera is going to show that. Let me try to... But right in the middle, that little doohickey slides forward. When that happens, it slides forward and lets that pin fall, sorry, that pin fall in. And that's the only time the sidebar gets up against those discs. So, I mean, what they did here is just phenomenal. It's, it's, it's actually mind-blowing. 
uh, because that is how, you know, we're able to, or, you know, I'll speak for myself again, how I am able to pick disc detainer locks. I need the sidebar to rub on the disc. I've explained it as I was picking other disc detainer locks. As you turn the disc, the sidebar rubbing against the side of them, that's how we feel for the gates. But this, it's not going to happen. It's never happening. So it's really mind-blowing. There we go with the true gates right there. Watch when I spin the key around. I mean, you can see all the true gates lined up right there. But again, it doesn't matter. Because until you do that, that gate, that sidebar, is not going to rub on them. So I've been playing with this thing. I've had it all the way apart. And, you know, trying to figure out how to, uh, how to combat that. But I, I can't do it. Um, I, and I don't see it being done anytime soon. Tomorrow's not looking good either. But, you know, I love a challenge. To me, all locks are kind of a puzzle, and I like to try and solve them. So I will be playing with this, you know, uh, from time to time and see if I can figure something out. Uh, hopefully we'll have a revisit, but I'll tell you what, I don't see it happening anytime soon. So yeah, the road to Sarah, just phenomenal. Uh, you know, how do you keep a, a lock picker from, from picking a lock? Keep them from getting the right tools in there. Right? They did that. Whew! Yeah, so phenomenal. Uh, to you guys, what is it? Uh, Ryan and Tyler that started the company, the brothers. Two thumbs up, guys. You and your company. Uh, phenomenal job. Uh, I'm just flabbergasted by it. And by the way, the puck itself, really nice. Uh, and this is a prototype, so they're going to do a couple little tweaks uh, before they go full scale with it, I guess. But it's already it's already nice. <laughs> it's already really really nice so yeah please check out the links i'm going to leave below for uh lock noob and the the bully lock company so you can check out the uh their animations of this lock and again i'll leave a couple pictures at the end of this video so be sure to check those out and that is it so thank you all so much for tuning in i highly appreciate it um maybe you learned something here i sure did uh, if you're not subscribed yet, you need to do so because all the cool people are doing it and you don't want to be left out. Thank you.